What I'm about to show you is sort of the uh, synopsis of all of the notes that came from the sessions yesterday afternoon. And I've sort of uh, characterized those uh, according to some different topic areas. And probably the, the, the thing that Eric was just talking about that we're going to do first really relates to the challenge itself. Um, the specific driving biological problem with well-specified goals. And essentially, what is the scope? If we're going to do some community endeavor together, uh, you know, what, you know what, is that, what is going to be I think well, there was a general agreement from the sessions that there needs to be a driving biological problem. Um, and you know, what is that problem? What should the scope be that it's something that we can all identify with? And it's clear in that, in that biological problem there are other elements of that uh, relating to data and uh, methodologies and simulation and so on that all need to, to be fed into that. And we need to look at it in the context of other things that have been done that have succeeded and failed on this kind of uh, big scale. So that, that's really the challenge. And um, the first part of the afternoon is going to be essentially putting together a community statement that reflects that challenge. Uh, hopefully that's clear. Um, and then the other elements that came out of the discussions yesterday, uh, I've grouped by uh, three different areas. And we're going to discuss these when, when we come back. And I'm not going to go into them now, but, but only just to sort of put them in context so um, you know what they are. One was uh, infrastructure and methodology, and it was a whole series of uh, things that we've discussed around that, of course. Uh, another one was education dissemination. Uh, and the final one uh, was sociology. So we will, we will be addressing that in the second half, those in the second half of the afternoon. The first part, uh, as Eric's just described, is the idea of uh, coming up with a community statement. So what this is, I'll read it out in a second, but it's essentially a straw man to uh, get you to react, probably negatively, uh, to, to that. And then, you know, go off. And I, we just had literally an hour, well over an hour conversation about, uh, about this. Um, and. Uh, you know, we had a lot of fun doing it, and, I'm not, and, and I think it really made us think about what it is we're trying to achieve here. So, I'm, you know, I think you will then come back. So you'll be in these groups that Eric described. The scribes will have this statement already, um, and so they can read it out to you, and I think Steph's printing copies as well. Um, and you'll discuss that in smaller groups of uh, half, you know, 10 people or so. So... You know, the, the, the sort of straw man we came up with was this idea to describe the multi-scale structure and associated biological processes that enable a comprehensive modeling of a simple cell type that can be disseminated and easily used by others for discovery. Um, you know, what, you know, you can argue about cell types, you can argue, you can argue about all sorts of things, and we can, you know, you can state it in any way you wish as a group, but what we really want is each group to come back as much as possible with one shared statement per group. What we'll then do is we'll look at those and um, we're not going to get into a lot of uh, details about, about them, but I think it'd be worth like, just looking at what each group does. I mean, this would ultimately form some you know, kind of opening statement to some kind of resource or some kind of, uh, you know, in terms of what we're, the NSF proposal, you're, um, we're crowdsourcing essentially uh, the opening statement for that. Uh, so it says, to describe the multi-scale structure and associated cell biological processes, I should have put cell in red, through a comprehensive modeling of a cell that can be disseminated and easily used by others for discovery, the deliverable will be a 3D virtual cell of a particular type or a limited number of types. Approach should be able to be used to answer specific important biological questions, but also make it possible to understand where our data tools and approaches are still limited. Comments? There was quite a bit of other discussion <laughs> that went on, but one of the things you'll notice with that through is that uh, uh, it was pointed out that it said a lot of the others were to enable modeling, but this was to say that modeling was an integral part of this and that that was the part of that process. Mm -hmm. 
one of the one of the things that's come up in these discussions, which we've not really broached, is you know, when you say cell type or limited number of cell types, you know, we've we've had some discussion about uh, what those cell types should be, <laughs> um, and I'm not sure we necessarily want to get into that here, but. Um, So um, one of the things that we brought, we're started to bring up, and maybe this is in the next session, is that you know, cells are very different and they're diff different challenges. And so if one was going to have exemplars of certain cells, what would you like to have? Uh, it was pointed out there's motile versus non-motile cells, and so those would clearly be very different. Uh, there are cells of varying complexities, as we uh, heard. But there are also cells that can work more or less independently, like a macrophage versus cells that need to be embedded in tissues. And we, we've heard already and we know intrinsically that they will behave very differently in isolation. So there were, uh, Jim, I think, or James brought up that some tissues are essentially parallel and some aren't. So if you understand a liver cell and uh, it surrounds, they're essentially, essentially multiplicative units that you might be able to use to sort of understand what the liver does. Where in other cases, like heart or brain, where if you don't understand these larger networks and um, integrated things, you're not really understanding what the organ does. So I thought that there are these sort of interesting things that start to pop out when you're making this selection. Um, we agreed that it should, you know, when we say simple cell types, we said, well, what about the red blood cell? And they're like, well, if you're gonna do the red blood cell, you ignore the nucleus, you ignore a gigantic thing of what makes life interesting. Um, the larger discussion really was, though, um, interestingly enough, about everyone said we need to have the biological questions, the biological use cases, but we were sort of again saying what was the output of this going to be? I know you said maybe we shouldn't be thinking of grants, but ultimately it's who's going to pay for it. Um, so we talked about time frame, we talked about resources. Um, we kind of discussed uh, this issue of driving biological questions. If you pick a particular cell type, then you risk alienating a bunch of people who aren't interested in that cell type, and it's viewed as a project for them and not for everybody else. So driving biological questions are important, driving biological questions that should be able to do something. But then we also discussed resources like the Allen Brain Atlas, where I was saying that was one of the few successful neuroinformatics resources precisely because it did not have a driving biological question. And that we understood it, that thing well enough that at that point it was an engineering project and that was better done through industry and not necessarily through the biologists themselves and academia, where you do tend to dilute resources just because of the way academia is structured. So we had a large question about this in terms of moonshot metaphors, of course. Are we ready? Is it 1960? And we know what we need to do to have the person set, set, step on the moon, which in and of itself might not be all that interesting as a goal. It's obviously the journey there. Or uh, are we in 1300 or 1400 or 1600 where I can say I'm going to put a man on the moon in 10 years, but I couldn't do it. Um, so I think there's a lot of things that have to be sort of thought through about this. And again, if we s have all of the components, how are we going to put them together? And is the typical academic project the best way to do that? Hmm. Other thoughts? Uh, yeah, I was in this group, and uh, a sentence that that really got me and spoke to me, uh, but so it got deleted at the last minute. It was. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that it, the project should codify what we do know about cells and point to what we don't know about cells. Yeah, I, I did like the cut word codify uh, because I kind of feel like there's a lot of knowledge out there, but it's not well organized, and it would be this is an opportunity to put it all in one place. Um, so I wanted to say uh, one more thing in, in defense of. Uh, well-defined biological questions. Uh, the thing is, we we will be claiming that we've built or that we are in the process of building a tool set that can be used for multi-scale modeling of cell biological behavior. But the thing is, we will have to prove that. We, we cannot just claim it. Uh, we have to prove it um, in, in some way. And that means that we have to apply our tools to certain particular relevant uh, questions and, and we might as well start uh, at the beginning and say well for example these questions we will try to answer because as I said if we don't demonstrate that we can use it 
uh, people will say yes. So y you say you have something nice and these are potential use cases, but you don't demonstrate that it works. Apart from the fact my son just dropped me some music in a Dropbox. So, uh, um, okay, thanks. Uh, anything else to be said about that? I mean, I, I think this is an interesting and you know, open question that's come from all of this, and I don't quite know how to address it at this point. But if if the system is open and extensible, it shouldn't matter what type of cell then you're going to be looking at. You may have communities of subgroups who are interested in only particular types of cells. Um, but the overlying structure of the system should be available for all, all those different groups. Yeah, that would be definitely a metric of success. <laughs> yeah, I was going to add to that and say that um, <clears throat> uh, certainly the, the, the tools themselves that are developed should be general enough to be able to simulate any kind of cell. Um, you know, I think cells have a lot more in common uh, between each other than, than, than their differences. And I think along the way, uh, um, you know, no one knows where, where this might lead, right? But, but I think it's clear that along the way, uh, as we put these things together, we're going to discover general principles um, that all cells use, and and um, yeah, so so you know the, the mix and match and extensibility and and, and modularity and things like, things like this, are, I think, are going to become clear uh, principles that that we discover. So, although I agree with Martin absolutely 100% that some specific statement needs to be made about it. The fact that the, the, the tools that we develop will be applicable, uh, broadly applicable to any cell type, um, you know, uh, shouldn't be, you know, shouldn't be underestimated. Um, and yeah. Uh, uh, go, go ahead, Andrew. What we can, what we can uh, expect to be able to do, especially within a relatively short time horizon, is limited by the data and the scientific understanding that we have too. And um, so it's not just about tools, it, it's also about the available data. That a project like this isn't going to generate new data that we don't have. Um, it's, I think it's going to make that data more easily shared and um, make it be used in new ways to ask scientific questions. Okay, I think, uh, no. It's a coming. So I very much like the statement, the only thing that I would try and figure out how to add, and I don't know how to add it without making a mess, is that <laughs> somehow or another building a model of, don't try and take this down, but building a model of doing this for one or two cells needs to show the way for how others can come to the site, use the infrastructure to do it for many more cells. Yeah. So I don't know, Marianne, you're much better at words than I am. Is there a way to use the word template or a process or a procedure somewhere in there that doesn't muck up your beautifully crafted sentences? Well, I think that there's going to be, there's going to be a process after this to combine all these statements and capture these ideas. Yeah, so. I, I don't think we need to make it pretty right now. Yeah. All right, well, we'll, 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 we'll assign you that. Okay, so, should we move on to the next one? Yeah. Um, so, the final thing for today before Mark's talk is to you know, move off the community statement and just uh, to s essentially summarise uh, those things that, uh -oh, um, that 
came from the discussions yesterday. So I, you know, I broken those. I tried to encapsulate that and break it down into uh, different things. And the uh, what the idea here is, for the remainder of the time, uh, which is you know, going to be an hour or less, that again you can pick. There's going to be three different topic areas. So this is one of them: infrastructure methodology. Uh, the other one, sociology and the other one is dissemination and education. And you can take away uh, this bullet list, and I'll email that to the scribes. And, yeah, and, um, and you know, you can elaborate on that or subtract from it as you, as you see fit. So I don't necessarily want to go through all of these points, but um, maybe, you know, if, you, if there are p things that people want to say about each one of these, uh, I don't mean each bullet, but each, uh, each page. I, I'll make a couple of comments in case it's not clear. Uh, I think this unification um, was a theme that came up today quite a lot as well. Um, you know, as an example, we heard a case where uh, the experiment was, in a sense, proved incorrect by the theory, um, and and so there's a there's a definite synergy here. So I think that's that's a nice thing. Um, the, this going beyond Cytoscape. Cytoscape is clearly a very successful community project. Um, and, you know, there's a meeting going on right now, in fact, up in San Francisco between people who develop modules for Cytoscape, and it's, it's got that, that sense of community about it. But, you know, it is, it is in a sense, just a, around a tool as opposed to being around something more than that. Um, and in that, you know, that's not a criticism. That's that's just happens to be where where this lies. Uh, the portability of formats, uh, uh, an error, you know, dealing with errors, all, all relate to the methodology. Reproducibility. Uh, there's, there's a question of how much it matters if people aren't reusing the models. Um, uh, a coat wrap. There's this notion of a coat wrap where people can essentially. You know, deposit something that can be used in a, in a way, and then a continuum of scale. So that was sort of issues that related to that I teased out of what came. There was a lot of stuff said, but I tried to encapsulate this, the points. Does anybody want to comment or say anything about this? I mean, you, you're going to have the opportunity to yeah. do that. All right. So um, the uh, this the We've already talked a bit about the wow factor. Something that came up actually last night wasn't in the notes, but was that it struck me in this, this area of education dissemination that there isn't really a well annotated uh, and an accessible set of images and video uh, around uh, any aspect of the cell that uh, you can you can easily get hold of the way you would. And correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and so there's no authoritative source of these kinds of things. And so people tend to go to the web, they'll Google images, and they'll find things, but they're not necessarily getting the best things. Uh, they're not necessarily getting the most, uh, you know. And so the notion of Getty images, which you know, is essentially the idea of a collection that's in some way uh, supposedly of, of, of respectable quality, uh, the idea that, that that would be available seemed to me to be Personally, to be a, um, a very you know a, would be a very nice thing that the resource would have, could provide that would uh, actually get lots of usage. You're looking perplexed. Okay, so and you think that's that's enough? No, it's not enough. Oh, okay. Actually, you showed it to me, I'm remembering, sorry. Um, okay, so whatever it needs, it needs, uh, it needs a little more. Yeah. Okay. Social network. All right. Um, and then the idea that, uh, of, of making a journal out of this, and this is just, you know, just uh, that many of the things that go in here could uh, essentially be citable, uh, which would be, of course, provide incentives. Um, the, the, the notion that, you know, Art showed so beautifully yesterday that, uh, but not, you know, we, not to forget the importance of physical models and all of this. 
and then uh, you know the, the simple dis depictions, um, and I guess that relates in some ways to these things. But that, those were the things that were captured. And then uh, finally, in terms of the sociology, uh, you know, what are the principles of this community that one abides by? You know, what do you what do you what do you agree to? What's the contract that you agree to when you, you're working within this 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 entity? What 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 what, if you contribute to it, what can you expect to take back? Um, and what, what is the, the, mo the mode by which you work within this community? Um, uh, uh, this, is, this came out, actually Marianne said this to me at dinner last night. I thought this is, I think, a Mark Zuckerberg comment. Uh, so, you know, I think, you know, how do we find this community? I guess this meeting is an, an effort to find that community. Um, but, you know, maybe th there are other things that we can be doing not just through meetings, but through online activities and a whole variety of things, something to discuss. Uh, what you raised a minute ago about incentives and reward systems, um, you know, what, what's, the, what's the impetus to provide a well annotated model uh, in a resource. Uh, and something we've touched on, but not really dealt with uh, uh, in a, a very big way, I think, which is crowdsourcing, which is proving to be so powerful in a number of different forums. Wikipedia obviously being uh, one of the prominent ones and whether that, what role that could play here beyond what we've already discussed. So those are sort of the three areas. Any questions on any of that? Immediate thoughts? I know we discussed. Can we address, they're going to go up and talk about that. What's the most useful thing they can come back with? Right, so the most useful thing to come back with would be to uh, have the, essentially the scribes forward Take, I'll email this to the scribes right now and essentially elaborate on this or comment on uh, individual bullets that you feel uh, don't apply or, don't, uh, or, you know, or additional bullets or if things need to be modified or taken away, uh, you, know, you could do that by uh, you know, redlining or something. So in other words, redline, uh, redline these, you know, these, these lists um, and, and essentially provide some further input. <laughs>